Hi, thank you for tuning into Reubert Support YouTube channel. My name is Mayank Bhatti, and in this video, we are going to talk about organizations. So, this is going to be our agenda for today. First, we will talk about what is an organization in the Steel Connect world, how to create and delete organizations, different settings at the org level, followed by a quick demo. So, let's start with the organizational overview. Organization is nothing but the company's Steel Connect infrastructure, which we can manage using Steel Connect Manager. Now here at this level there are multiple things to do and understand so let's approach each one of them one by one. When you are inside an org level you will see multiple tabs such as name, location, networking defaults, social media, Wi-Fi manager, numbering pools, maintenance, data retention, export settings, agent, SSH, legal disclaimer, appliance threshold and appliance login. So without wasting much of the time here let's start with a quick demo. So I'm logged into our lab still connect manager. And if you want to create a new organization or delete the existing organization, you must be at the realm level. Filter the name of the organization that you want to delete. Select the organization. Under this drop down menu, delete the organization. Confirm. So this will delete our organization. Now let's create the same organization again. Provide all these details. and submit. Now you can see the organization is created. This is the org ID and it says it's registered to the cloud controller. Now if you want to go to that organization, click on this manage button. Under organization menu, I can see there are multiple tabs and let's cover all of them one by one. So under name and location, I can update the name of my organization. This is my global organization ID, which is used to uniquely identify my, my organization. I can also update the location of my organization here. I can also update the organization's contact info. Moving further on to the networking defaults, here we have internet breakout preference, when usage preference and fallback. So these things are the basic building blocks for the admins who are managing the organization. I'm gonna skip these things and we'll cover up in another video because it's going to require the concept of WAN path. Moving further, we have NTP settings. I can configure my internal NTP server. And if I leave it blank, these are the default NTP servers which will be used. Moving on to social media. Here I can use social media apps to authenticate guests in the guest access portal. Under numbering pools. So let's say when you create a new zone, all the zones will be created with a VLAN tag. So this is our VLAN tag and VLAN tagging starts with 1000. So let's say if you create one VLAN, the VLAN tag by default will be 1000. For the next one, it will be 1001. For next one, it will be 1002, 1003, 1004 and so on. In IPv4 network pool here, we have a network pool address which is 172.16.0.0 slash 12 network and all my zones are created in in this network moving further we can schedule the maintenance from here for this organization so i can schedule it for a group of sites day day of the week frequency time of upgrade now if i enable it then the upgrade will be performed in the local time zone by default our scm will be in utc time zone so I can change all these things here. This USB debugging toggle button, you don't have to worry about it. It's only used for the tag for troubleshooting purposes. Under data retention, you can see this is the traffic data history. It's stored for 14 days. Unregistered appliances will be visible for seven days. Under agent, you can see there are two different buttons. And from here, you can download the VPN agent for Windows and Mac. Under SSH, when you enable it, you have to put your public SSH key here. Once you click on submit, then you can uh, start the SSH tunnel and log into the appliances. So I'm going to cover up how to log into the appliance and start the basic troubleshooting in another video. Under legal disclaimer, you can enable or disable the legal disclaimer from here. Also, you can use the legal disclaimer from the realm level. 
under appliance threshold so you can see these are the default values and i would recommend not to change these values unless specifically required under appliance login as you can see this is the randomly generated password and i can use this password when i want to ssh or console into the appliance thank you for watching this video